Well, welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today, and today we have a subject matter expert or two in the hot seat who is willing to say, yeah, go ahead, ask me anything. You can't scare me. So our session today lasts for probably close to an hour. If you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guests and our attendees alike. And questions and comments are always Always welcome and if you have something that you'd like to contribute anonymously just put it in the chat to me and I'd be happy to share it or ask it for you and our topic today is small business owners streamline and automate your financials and I'm so excited to introduce today's subject matter experts Randy Rose and Gail Goldman of Thrive Business Services and let me tell you just a little bit about them Randy Rose is the co-founder of Thrive Business Services. Wave your hand, Randy, so they know which one you are. And beyond being a seasoned bookkeeper with a BS in accounting, Randy has extensive experience in helping businesses grow from the ground up. She spent many years as a coach working with business owners to help them understand the numbers and use them as a guide in making growth-oriented business decisions. Randy co-founded Thrive Business Services after seeing smart business owners struggle with their books time and time again. Built on a foundation of service, Thrive Business Services provides organizations with easy access to reliable financial information, positioning your business for growth. Now, Randy's always had a passion for education, training, and development. At the age of just 23, which was like only a couple of years ago, was Randy, <laughs> Randy was recognized as the world's youngest seminar leader for Landmark Education. Since then, she's become a certified coach with inspiring champions, as well as trained and worked as a life coach with Accomplishment Coaching. Gail Goldman, wave your hand, Gail is the co-founder of Thrive Business Services. With nearly 20 years of experience in the bookkeeping industry, Gail has been, an inst has been instrumental in the growth of many businesses in the San Diego area and beyond. With a practical and educational background in marketing and business management, Gail takes a 360 degree approach to positioning your business for success. And during her downtime from making magic happen for clients, I'm, I'm, let's see, making magic happen with clients books, I started to say, and maybe that has a completely different meaning. So from making magic happen with her clients, you can find Gail wandering through craft fairs, trying out new recipes, and enjoying life in the great outdoors of San Diego. So please join me in welcoming these two lovely ladies, Gail Goldman and Randy Rose. Welcome, ladies. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you for having us. So what's going on in your business? I mean, what, how has, how's things changed or not changed in your business since all of this crazy, crazy stuff has started happening? I'll start. Um, we found that one of the things that's most important to do is really get in touch with our clients and see what our clients' needs are mm -hmm. because our clients are uh, across the board from the, beauty industry to attorneys to e-commerce, everybody's got, their needs are all different. So um, each industry has its own particular pivot that they've had to do during COVID. Some of them, their doors were closed, like the beauty industry, um, whereas some of them, this was a boon to them, where they got even busier because they were very much in need, mm -hmm. you know, and in demand. Um, some people have really had to take a look at how they were going to generate new streams of income. And they used it as an opportunity to step back and take a look at their business. And, you know, uh, we helped a lot of our clients navigate their whole PPP, EIDL, and what loans, what do they need, where do they qualify and all that. But um, mostly it's been an opportunity for them to really take a look at their business because if their business wasn't healthy to begin with, then putting, as the expression goes, good money after bad, um, wasn't really going to help them. So people were really interested and got very, very um, curious about their spending and, oh, I thought I stopped that a long time ago or, oh, I'm still paying for that? I don't get any value from that service. Mm -hmm. Or um, 
you know, they thought that they were running their business well because they have no debt, but that really impacted their banking relationship. And they had a challenge getting a PPP or a loan because they had no debt. So it's really gone across the gamut, I would say. Yeah. Wow. And I think, you know, the, the point you made about people stopping, stepping back and taking a look at their business, you know, sometimes we're so busy running the business that we don't really have time to step back and be strategic or make decisions um, or you know, pay attention. You know, sometimes we're just too busy to pay attention. So I think that's a really, really, really good point. Gail, what do you want to add to the conversation there? Well, I think that, um, as Randy said, what the client's needs are really drove where we were going to go. You know, um, we had 30% of our clients who were not bringing in any income because they were closed because 30% of our client base is the beauty industry. So how do you work with a with an industry where there's no money coming in whatsoever? How do you prepare them? So um, we we really did a lot of hand holding with our clients and and it was a wonderful experience actually because we got to deepen our relationship with all of our clients out of that experience and really um, provide a lot more than um, what would normally be considered what we would be doing but what we felt in our heart was really needed to be provided. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Excellent. Um, you know, when you mentioned that 30% of your, your clientele is in one particular industry, is that um, one of the services that you maybe help your clients in strategic planning as far as looking at the percentages of their, their clients and who do they have where and um, where should they maybe look at balancing or attracting a different kind of clientele? Um, we do. We get the, um, every industry has its own KPIs or key performance, ind you know, indicators. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm like, it's <laughs> key performance industries. Acronym um, hell, right? <laughs> industry, you know, indicators or metrics. And the beauty industry is very, very, very well metric. So, um, we uh, we do do that with clients, but we get a lot of our uh, salon industry clients from uh, so biz, uh, beauty industry coaches. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of, uh, one of the things that I get to do is I get to co-lead a course, which is all about cash flow planning for that industry. And um, that industry is a very interesting industry to me, um, not because I think, not because I have any real strength in a hair, you know, doing hair or anything. This is a good COVID hair day. Um, and I had my hair done in months. Um, but um, for many of those, and this will go also for a restaurant as well. If, if your rent is too high, then you're going to have a really hard time making it, right? Just like being in California and paying for too much house right? You're just going to always be behind the eight ball. And for that industry in particular, what's kept a lot of people's doors open is retail. Only how the CPA relates to the business is just money in and money out and dealing with you for tax purposes. But for the, the owner really does have two businesses underneath the same roof. They have a service business and they have a retail business. And if their compensation is off or their rent is too high, then their service business is never going to be profitable. So we are able to work with people and look at those types of metrics and see, um, and we do this with our other clients, we have them do a deeper dive. Once you've got good information and it's real, then it's, what is it telling you? Right? So, because uh, if you can have the information tell you or interpret it, then the owner can take a look at what their options are that are on the table and figure out what's going to be the, you know, they could quantify them. Okay, if I go this direction, this is what it's going to look like. If I go this direction, this is what it's going to look like. And if I go this direction, this is what it's going to look like. Which direction works best for me? And then they can go make their choice because it's not, we're not, it's their life. They have to make that decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. She asked about strategic planning. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think, yeah, I guess I did that. 
<laughs> well, and, and the other piece of that, that thanks, Gail, is um, when we meet with our clients, we actually do ask them what their plans are. Because a plan is going to be very different if somebody's planning on selling in three years or if they're planning on keeping it just as a cash producer. Um, we just took on a client and I just had this conversation with them where they're currently at is getting themselves profitable. And I was like, listen, if in five years you want to sell, that's a different conversation. Let's address this piece first. And then we can look at what your future is. Because if you want to sell, you want to have more profit not less profit, so you get a better price for your product, for your business, so your strategy may then change depending on what their long-term plan is. So yeah, we do have those conversations as well. Um, I, I'd much rather deal with the front-loaded conversation than be surprised on the back end. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, you know, one thing that, that you said in, in your um, bio, Randy, and, and Gail, jump in here at any point. And actually, any of you that are in the call here, jump in, ask your questions, make comments, and so forth, you know, as we go. Um, but you said that you frequently see um, your customers, very smart small business owners, make the same kind of mistakes over and over and over again. What are some of those mistakes? What are the mistakes that you see small business owners making? Oh, I would say making decisions with their heart, not their head. Uh, making decisions based on feeling versus fact. Um, so uh, some examples of that might look like uh, this conversation I had yesterday with this client, they, don't say anything, like they've been paying some of their people cash and so now that they're getting, I know, right, like in Nicole's face, <laughs> right? But it's an interesting client because they're now using a salon program. So all of their sales are now going through the salon program, cash sales and not cash sales. So they have to completely redo how they're doing things. And there's a conversation about the people who were hourly wanting to be paid more because now they're going to make less because their tax is coming out, right? So now they have to have this conversation about what the pros and the cons are to, listen, if, it's, if I'm paying you 13, it's now costing me 14 and a half dollars, right? It's no longer 13, but here's the benefit, right? So one of the conversations, one of the things that I find people don't do is be able to talk to their, they make decisions and don't include the employees in the decision, mm -hmm. right? You, you mess up with people's money. You can't like, that's one of those things like you gotta like, and you've gotta be prepared to answer any question. And whereas you can't predict every question, you want to do your homework and actually be prepared to ask the questions you know they're going to ask mm -hmm. so that you've done your homework because as an owner, the buck stops with you. Yeah. Um, I would say that's one. That's a big a one. Few. It's a few, right? Like in dealing with. I have a with, few. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll let Gail talk, but that was that's a big one to me. Okay, so, so uh, not having contracts is a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you are accepting credit cards, and mm -hmm. you don't have a contract with an, with a client. You don't have invoices to show that you've been billing that client and the client goes to the merch account company and says, I never authorized this. You have no recourse. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to have contracts, really clearly stated deliverables, also really clearly stated what you need from the client and when you need it, because otherwise you end up with relationships with clients that go on and on and on you've already been paid, but you're not getting what you need to fulfill in the service. So that's one thing. Um, when you're cash strapped and you decide you're not going to pay your payroll taxes or you're not going to pay your sales tax, that's a slippery slope. That's definitely a slippery slope. So um, it's best to get in communication as soon as possible with those agencies to let them know what's happening because otherwise they're going to start sending you love letters telling you they've missed you they've missed hearing from you and um 
And then at some point, they're just going to pay you a visit. So nobody likes that staying on top of your payroll taxes. If you're somebody who is not reliable to take care of that stuff yourself, definitely hire a company like Pink Payroll or Coastal Payroll or Gusto or ADP or Paychex. Just handle it. Um, Not having a billing system and managing your billing system and staying on top of your collections. It's a lot easier to collect from a client that's maybe 30 days or 45 days past you than it is to collect from a client that's 90 days past you. Mm. So it's really important to stay on top of your cash. Um, And it's really important to um, manage your debt and to understand how your balance sheet works relative to your profit and loss report. A lot of people don't know that. Um, the importance of a balance sheet is for you to be able to see, well, what what is easily convertible to cash? So we start with cash at the top of the balance sheet. Then we look at, well, what are your assets that you can convert? So like you, if you have receivables, you can convert those to cash by going to a factoring company or financing your receivables. Um, you can, if you have furniture, you could sell that. You know, there are some things you can sell to convert to cash. Then we look at your liabilities. Are your liabilities really more than what you can afford to pay right now? So that's a really serious conversation always, but definitely as you're looking for funding, um, the bank is going to look at, you know, how much debt you have and have you been bringing in enough business to pay that debt, to pay you to, um, to keep going and keep growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's always really important to understand your financials and not be afraid to ask professionals, especially if you have a bookkeeper, ask them to sit down with you and go over this information because a profit and loss, unfortunately will show you what happened. It won't tell you what's happening. So you always want to be able to stay on top of what's really happening in your company. How long is it taking your customers to pay you? Uh, Where are you at with your cash? What pivots can you make? Where can you cut back? Mm -hmm. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add, Randy? I do. And I thought that what you said was really fantastic. It's It's really interesting. You can have a profitable company, but not have a healthy company. It could be literally going down the drain, but because you're, you know, say spending all of your spending on credit cards, but not paying those off, you could be increasing your debt while having a profitable company, which doesn't mean that your, your business is healthy. Um, yeah, it was interesting. I was thinking as small business owners start to hire people, one of the things that's very, very common is they don't have written instructions, checklists, and SOPs. So here we are hiring somebody to do something that we know how to do. And we have these expectations, but how well are we really training them? And do they have reference points for them to go back to? And are your instructions written in um, language that only you understand since you're the one who created the system? Or is it really clear that somebody knows what it is that they need to do and how much time they need to do it in? Like, what is the expectation? very challenging to expect something from somebody when they're not clear about what it is that is expected of them. You can't hold them to that. You know, sorry, that's okay. You know, it becomes the, you know, it's really a matter of where you've, you're the, the fish stinks from the head as the expression goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Gail. What's really great about those SOPs and checklists is that you want to sell your company, you now 2x the value of your company because somebody else can step in and just keep this, keep your systems going and they understand your systems. You know, I used to years ago and, and Lori, um, Lori worked, has worked in this industry forever and ever as far as, as uh, database management and, and um, customer service systems. But I used to, in a former life, do implementations of CRMs. And it was, um, I remember somebody telling me one time that as when you're getting ready to implement any kind of system that's going to automate all the things that you do manually, you know, that you need to use the USA system and it's understand simplify and automate because Mm -hmm. i can't tell you how many times i was brought in as a consultant 
to fix a problem they had by putting in this whiz bang Cadillac system. And all you were doing was automating crap, you know, because there were no SOPs, there was no flow charting, there was no documentation of what we do, you know, as a business. So I know that a big part of your business is, is automation. So can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Yeah. There's, can yeah, I follow so, on to Patty? Cause um, sure. I do multiple things in my business and, and part of it is consulting and that's pretty straightforward. But the other part is I do promotional product. Uh, I'm a promotional product distributor. So I was interested to hear, like, what do you run into, maybe if you've worked with businesses like that, a distributor type business, what kinds of things do they not automate that you think can be automated? And I was interested in that in the description of this. Mm -hmm. Ask me anything. Good. I'm going to let Gail start. <laughs> <laughs> I love that question uh, for your industry. What can be automated? This answer, the answer to that question is it changes every single day only because there are more and more software programs that are uh, developers that are understanding that that program that you have access to uh, in the cloud, if it doesn't interact and interface with other programs, it's a dud. Because now you have a silo. And that information sits there and has to then get hand entered all of your information, which is ridiculous in this day and age. So, um, if you're looking for, say for example, if you're looking for certain solutions uh, for your distributor company, it just depends on what sort of problems you're having. So for example, as a distributor, you may have sales on eBay and you may have sales on your website and you may have uh, phone in sales and you may have uh, eBay sales and Amazon sales and there are software programs that will pull all of that information into your um, say for example your QuickBooks program or if you're using a program like Salesforce it'll pull that information to Salesforce so you'll see where all of that information is coming from and what ads are effective and everything like that you can track all of that information now if you're looking for some possible software solutions, uh, my f I have two favorite websites for looking for software programs. One is called getapp.com. It's G-E-T-A-P-P.com. And you can actually uh, say, okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Apple user. I'm looking for a web-based program. Uh, I, have, I want it in English and Spanish. You can say all of the things that you're looking for as qualifiers, and it'll bring you um, not only some suggestions, but it'll also show you reviews. It'll also show you um, what, what the competitors are, so you get a sense of who the competitors are. I always want to know who the software program competitors are because I'm like, well, what, who's doing this that I don't know about? And then the other program, the other website I like is apps.com, A-P-P-S.com. And that's a site that's um, run by Intuit and for QuickBooks Online. And they vet all of those software providers and you get to see how all those programs work with integration. So I didn't okay. get into the nitty gritty of your question, but I try to address it because but is there anything else I can answer for you about that question? No, no, I didn't mean for you to go, you know, that dive into my industry. But yeah, I mean, it is, it was, you know, basically around QuickBooks because I do, I do have an online um, app that I can use to contact my suppliers and get pricing and all that. But then I have to manually enter all that into QuickBooks. And it's my choice. This provider does provide the capability to do um, you know, purchase orders and invoices and so forth through their app. I just feel better from an overall company perspective to have it in my QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, and there are purchase order programs 
in app.com that you can find that will assist you with those as well. They'll pull in all of your vendor uh, stock and tell you um, what new products they have, what are, what's discontinued. I mean, it's pretty exciting mm -hmm. what's available in, the, in that respect. Cool. Okay, thank you. You can tell I geek out on this stuff. It's like a <laughs> hobby for me. <laughs> I like automation. Automation will increase your product, will increase your productivity, your profitability, your peace of mind. It'll streamline and have you be able to focus on your clients and not on managing your systems. Yeah. Well, so when you talk about automation, are you referring to automating like many, like the integration points? Because, I mean, do you see, um, I guess most of your clients having their own bookkeeping system, whether it be QuickBooks or whatever, and then automating it is, you know, trying to get software and apps that interface and bring it all into one, one common location. Yes, as much as possible. As the much as piece, possible. Yeah. The other piece to automation, though, goes back to what Patty was saying. You can't automate something that's crap. Show... Um, for lack of another word, I apologize. Um, so it's really important to look at the process that you're dealing with and see, is it a growable process? Is it scalable? I've always said that if something can't handle four times the amount of activity, you don't have a scalable system. Because if something can just handle, can it double itself, that's great. But if it can't quadruple itself, it's not scalable. Mm -hmm. And the whole purpose of a business is to be profitable. And some businesses, it's more about more activity, whereas some other businesses, it's about increasing the dollar ticket. But sure. either way, sure. what creates the value is the system. So if something's systemic, if instructions, you know, uh, it's very important to have a new set of eyes looking at something, the reading through instructions. It's amazing how much we assume that people know or understand when we go to train them on that or when we go to delegate it. So before you can, there are certain things that can definitely be done with automation and I'm a huge fan, but it's really important to have that foundation prior to it because then it doesn't matter what program you're going to or from, the foundation and the system is already in place. Well, can you say more about that, Randy? So what would be an example of that? Um, so let's just even say using QuickBooks as a tool, right? So one of the functions that QuickBooks has is the rules feature. And it, you know, the technology that's out there is constantly getting tweaked, updated, better, et cetera. So we have 100, say, clients. And uh, there's, there's people who use the bank rules and people who don't use the bank rules. So let's say you've gotten your bookkeeping as tight as you could be, but then it's like, we look and we go, wow, you're not using the rules feature. Now, that might eliminate 25% of the bookkeeper's time. It's not going to eliminate everything, but for those expenses that are expected and recurring, great. Why do you need to touch them twice? Let them go into, let them automatically go from the bank feed into the register instead of, no, I need to review these. Or uh, I, to answer another piece about that, Let's say you don't know what the expense is. So in particular in the beauty industry, let's say you're buying inventory, but you don't know if the inventory is for retail or for your back bar usage, you know, like washing people's hair, using it for the, produ for the production of the service, but you're buying it from the same vendor. Great, we know that we could, if we know it's that vendor, let it go to uncategorized if that's the case, because you know you're gonna need to get the backup, the source documentation to see whether it's back bar or it's inventory and then it needs to be processed separately. But at least you know if it's coming from Orbe or Paul Mitchell or whoever it's coming from, you know it's that. Mm -hmm. Again, you might take 100 transactions in the banking screen and whittle it down to 30. Okay, that's a lot of time if you then multiply that by 100 clients times 10 minutes a day, you know, 10 minutes a week times 52 weeks, you've now taken, you've not changed any of your software. You're just looking at using that software more efficiently. And so that then goes, when you're dealing with employees, is everybody trained to do it the same way? 
Do they know how to do it? Is that expectation clear? There's a million ways that you could produce a balance sheet and a P&L. The question is, was it done the smoothest way and was it done uh, the most efficient? Because that's your bottom line. Did that answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So, and that's just an example. It's no different if you're dealing with a company that's answering the phones, you know, like how people know how to, where, what responsibility do the people have to produce that result? Mm -hmm. Do they know where that wiggle room is? Have you given them the space for them to um, thrive? So, you know, it, it sounds like, um, you know, you're talking about creating rules and all these things that make it easier so that you don't have to touch every transaction all the time. Um, when does a small business owner know that it's time for them to move from managing their business on spreadsheets to a system or um, worse yet, you know, managing it on some kind of a handwritten something or other, you know, like when, when would you tell them it's time to, to get a system? I would say uh, from right from the get-go, mm -hmm. absolutely right from the get-go, mm -hmm. because for a number of reasons. One, if you're using a handwritten sheet or an Excel spreadsheet, and I understand there's a lot of people out there that love Excel, love it, I understand, I really appreciate it. But what you're missing there is uh, you're having to build a tool that's already been designed and that is already backed by a multi-million by multi-million dollar companies mm -hmm. that are already anticipating your needs. So why reinvent the wheel? There is so much uh, that is asked of us as business owners, mentally, emotionally, physically. It is, it is not easy all the time to be a business owner. It's very rewarding, but it definitely has its challenges. So why make your life even more difficult? Um, this is a program that you can take pictures of your receipts and it'll attach them to transactions. This is a program where you can uh, plug in an adapter and swipe and get your clients to pay on site. Or you can set up for recurring transactions for them to just automatically pay you every month. I mean, there's so much. Not only that, but the people that advise you can have access to your file and be able to look at it real time and be able to advise you real time. Mm -hmm. and, and while QuickBooks or any other program that you use, an accounting program, they'll have assisted AI. They're not going to know everything all the time. They're not going to know. Uh, they're going to try and know because they're pulling all this information from all these users, but they won't know all the time. But it's so much easier than trying to create the wheel by yourself. It's like you'd be doing yourself a disservice to, to try and manage it on paper or with Excel. Good, good point. So does anyone in the audience have some additional questions for our, our leading experts here? Don't let them get away. Don't, don't leave this meeting with your questions unanswered. <laughs> uh, I have some additional things I can share, if that's Please. helpful. Yeah. Um, I like YouTube for uh, finding resources about what's possible with integration and automation. And, um, I'm sure you've heard there's a company called Zapier. It helps uh, connect programs that don't necessarily have integration already built in. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a growing community of Zapier lovers out there. So there's a lot of information on YouTube on how to connect these programs and how to teach yourself how to think like them um, to create what's called Zaps that do things like if one statements, if this happens, then do this, if this happens, do that. They're great. Mm -hmm. um, circling back to your original question about things that business owners can do to help them be successful, I would definitely say pay yourself, make sure you pay yourself, and uh, take vacations, mm -hmm. celebrate your wins. Those are really important.
Yeah. Because nobody's going to know more than you how hard you work to make something happen. Mm -hmm. So make sure you celebrate those wins. Yeah. And um, one of the things that we give to all of our new clients is we give them this book. I don't know if it translates mm -hmm. really well. Yeah. It's called Accounting for the Numbers Phobic. It's a survival guide for small business owners. Um, the writer uh, translates all the accounting terminology into really accessible information, like as if you were driving a car, you have a dashboard and you're, you have your gas gauge and you have your engine gauge telling you if your engine's hot or cold and then you have your speedometer and each one of these could be considered something that you're watching in your company and she talks like that and so we love this book it really makes it, uh, accounting very plain spoken and accessible and easy to um, for easy for somebody who look your thing is graphic design your thing is not accounting but at least you can read this and have a better sense of what's going on with your company how to understand these numbers mm -hmm. that's excellent that's a that's a great resource um you guys there was a, a question in the chat um, where they were asking who is your ideal customer and then how do you go about onboarding them You're asking us our ideal customer mm -hmm. oh so i don't know if they're asking because they're trying to figure that out for themselves as they create their own business or because they want to know if they're an ideal customer for us. So I'm going to answer it from the perspective of what the journey looked like to identify, you know, find our own ideal client. Um, so for us, our ideal customer is somebody who generates about anywhere from 350,000 to about $5 million in gross sales, anything less than that. And there may not be funds available for them to pay for, at least for a monthly bookkeeping client. We do consulting and we'll help people get set up and we'll do quarterly clients. But for an ideal who's gonna be like a monthly bookkeeping client, it's generally, you're gonna to wanna to have a certain amount of revenue, like their business warrants having somebody do their books on a weekly basis. Um, and at a certain point, if they've got enough revenue, they've got somebody internal already doing it. They've got a department. It depends on the type of business. A restaurant doing five million is very different than possibly e-commerce or some other type of consulting company, right? Um, we definitely ask. So that's like, that's like the profile, right? The other piece of it is we're a cloud-based company. So if you're not comfortable interacting and knowing that we're never going to come to your office, we've identified we only deal with cloud-based clients. You know, we're not coming to your office. That's the way it goes. Our, our employees are everywhere from, you know, coast to coast. They could be Georgia, they could be California, they could be Colorado. Mm -hmm. So um, it makes a difference knowing that. They have to be coachable and willing to, they have to be responsive, right? So like if clients are not going to be responsive, we have no problem letting the door hit them on the butt as they leave. Because <laughs> it's, really, sorry, I'm from Brooklyn. You can take the girl out of Brooklyn, but you just can't take the girl out of the girl, right? <laughs> Um, you know, like if you're not going to be responsive or respectful to my team into what it is that we need in order to fulfill on serving you, we're not interested. It's just not going to be a happy win. We actually don't have any clients left that when the phone, I'm using the expression when the phone rings, um, we actually have a communication <laughs> tool that we use with our clients, but like when the phone rings or the communication comes in where the people go, Oh God, do I have to? We don't have any of those left. Like if we don't like the people, it's not somebody that we really want to work with. Um, they don't have to be our best friends. They're hiring us to do a service, right? They're hiring us to perform a, a service and provide something for them. But I gotta, I gotta like the person I'm interacting with. Otherwise I'm not going to want to call them or reach out to them or be an advocate for them to win. And really our clients were an advocate for them to win. Um, our, so our, our sales process includes asking them a ton of questions about getting a really good sense of their business, what it is today and what it is where they see themselves a year, two years, three years from now. We find out what's working. We find out what's not working, what keeps them up at night. Like I, you might be able to tell I do the sales for the company, right? So like I have like a whole like, you know, series of questions that I deal with. And then once somebody says, 
yes, I create a proposal and it's a very detailed proposal for them because everybody's proposal is a little different. And then we have them sign their contract, which is the legalese piece. Mm -hmm. We've looked at using technology that combines it. It's an in-process thing. Um, so once they've gone through that and they move, now they're from, they go from sales to onboarding, right? And the onboarding of a client is it involves getting, processing their money. It involves setting up their QuickBooks if they don't already have one set up. It involves connecting all of their banking information if they haven't already done that. We use a program called HubDoc because it fetches and it's bank level security. So instead of, so uh, it's allowed people to be um, fully paperless, which is really great. People can just take a, you know, it, we started using it prior to QuickBooks really developing and being better with theirs at the moment. QuickBooks is just starting to fetch, mm -hmm. right? So Lori, like we said before, like technology is constantly changing, mm -hmm. right? So um, our clients really like knowing that they can be paperless. They can take a picture, they've got an email, they can just send it to that email and forward it. They can drag and drop it however they get it. Mm -hmm. So the bookkeepers always have access to it without having to bother the client for the things that we have access to. Mm -hmm. We have them set up bookkeeper logins. I don't want access to your information. I want access to your information. I don't want access to your money. <laughs> we close that door. I trust me, I trust Gail, I trust my employees. Yeah, I don't want that liability. And it's not something that you should have to do. Technology's allowed you to have access to everything without my needing to know your actual passwords and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, we use a client communication tool called Client Hub, which is kind of like having your own direct WhatsApp to thrive. Everybody sees it. So we always have two bookkeepers that are trained on a client's account um, so that if somebody goes on vacation or somebody gets sick, like we've built an entire onboarding structure so that people like we've handled as basically how Gail was trained is you know whenever there was a breakdown great it's an opportunity for a solution so these are how we've put this in place so onboarding really does take anywhere from three to six weeks depending on how responsive somebody's going to be and our onboarding team will meet with them on a weekly basis and make sure that they get all of their questions asked it might get down to the nitty gritty of, okay, well, what lines of inventory, where do you get, who are your vendors, who's this, how do they communicate, what's the payroll look like, what's the process, we don't have anything written down, okay, we're going to deal with that. You know, like, if, if, if an owner can't go on a three-week vacation and know that their business can completely thrive and operate without them, you got yourself a job, you don't have yourself a business. Wow. Um, right? So, that's kind of like our process got developed over six years. It didn't just happen overnight. It's not like you have to compare your process to ours, but like we've literally, the intention is for the process to be, the client's experience is really, whether the client's right or wrong, it's always going to be about the client's experience. Mm -hmm. So if you've made the experience great for the client, even if you mess something up and you own it, clients are great about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so about clients and onboarding, after the sale, you know, this is their next experience of you, and it's a make or break. You know, it's really the handoff of you of a team or your own within your own company. This is their next experience of you. You've like, you're the solution to all of their problems. You're going to bring peace of mind and efficiency and they're not going to have to think anymore. And all of a sudden now they're dealing with your, your onboarding and now they're like, oh, this is, could be a problem. Right. This is feeling uncomfortable. So, um, however you need to address onboarding, even if it's to talk with a friend and sit down with another business owner and say, this is what I do. This is a, how does it, you can treat your friend, your business owner friend, like they're a new client and see what their experience is like, see what is missing for them. And they'll be able to tell you. So, because it can be a make or break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it go that way. And, and the reality is, is from onboarding, they're first then going to go into production, right? So every transition is another place. Like, you know, you think of a, a track team, you know, passing the baton. You know, if it's a smooth passing of the baton, 
then you have a good chance of winning. If it's not a smooth passing of a baton, you know, the baton might drop, whatever that might look like, you can imagine what the ripple effect is. And in our case, we have a team, but even when if you don't have a team and it's just you, you're still moving it from one place to the other. And if you have any intention of growing, expanding, and potentially hiring, these are gonna be those places of pitfalls that you're gonna to get to deal with when you get to that next place. Yeah, yeah, I think it was, it was possibly, um, how easy would it be for me to transition to, to using a bookkeeping accounting service? You know, cause it, you know, if you don't understand accounting, you don't understand bookkeeping, which it's not your job, right? Your job is, doing hair or your job is, you know, selling makeup or, or doing social media or whatever it is. Your job is not being an accountant. So am I going to just take a dumping of, of paper and dump it in your lap? Or is, are you going to hold my hand and help me figure out how to get, you know, how to translate what I do into something workable from an accounting standpoint? Whatever um, uh, I'll do it briefly then Gail and she may sack. Whatever okay. company you move to or you hire, should make the transition easy for you and hold your hand. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be us, but whatever company you work with should the, the ultimately what they're, what you're paying them for is peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And they should educate you along the way. And if they don't educate you, then they're giving you a fish, not teaching you to fish. Cause then you're never going to not need them. Mm -hmm. And you as the owner should always be growing no matter what vendor you're working with. It's the book always stops with you. So if you want to get educated, find somebody that you feel safe with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would also say two other things. Um, I'm always leery of companies that say, oh, we can take care of that for you. We can do it all for you. We'll just take care of it. And they don't ask me questions about my company. Always lyrics of people like that because like you don't know me. You don't know me. You don't know my company. You don't know the challenges I'm having. You don't know where I'm going with my business, what needs to get handled now so that I can move on. You don't know me. And I would definitely say if you come across people who are like, yeah, 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 we can do that for you, move on. The next one, because because for me, it's important that people get me. And when we, our clients, they'll tell you, we get them but we spend the time to get to know them. And uh, we, Randy does an excellent job of talking to them and finding out what their needs are. And we don't talk accounting to our clients. You know, if I say to you, what do you need? And somebody says to me a P and L, I know you need more than that, but you're, you're trying to talk my language. No, I'm gonna talk your language. You know, I want to get to know you. I want to know what's going on with you. What are your pain points? What's keeping you up at night? What do you need? Do you need a new banking relationship? Are you looking for a CPA? Do you need a coach? You know, what do you need so that we can support you in growing? Our company is Thrive Business Services. Our mission is that businesses grow, prosper, flourish, and thrive. So we're always looking for that. So I would also look at when somebody tells, looks at their, when you look at some company's mission, do you experience that in your conversation with them? And, and otherwise it's just something they put on a piece of paper and filled out a template <laughs> or is it real? Yeah. So I would say you want to find a company that, did they get me? Laura, you have so a question? do you guys provide, yeah, so for like a solopreneur like myself that doesn't have the volumes at all that you were talking about, Randy, um, do you provide like a consulting, um, like you said, something like a quarterly thing, but do you mm -hmm. provide like a, a upfront, you know, discussion? Does it make sense to, you know, what, you know, kind of just a recommendations kind of thing? Yeah, I always do. Um actually these are probably my favorite things to do because I just love people is I'll do an assessment with you like I'll find out what your needs are and I'll be honest with you I have zero interest in trying to sell somebody something that's more than what they need and um, you know see how it is that you're getting your information how is it being tracked is it that you know do we just need to is there cleanup work that needs to be done on whatever you've already done right it's so right. already starting with a good foundation um, and then we For might sure. teach you how to do it, 
right? Like it, that sometimes some, some of what we do is we'll teach somebody how to do it and then they'll just, we'll just oversee it on a quarterly basis. And, you know, then educate you each quarter and go, okay, great. Well, we keep seeing the same mistakes. Great. So let's show you how to avoid those so that you don't make those same mistakes. And let's make sure that you understand it. We'll work with you to create an SOP on that and make sure that you've got instructions on how to do it. We'll videotape those. Um, but yeah, we'll always do an assessment up front and then just be straight about what we think is going to serve you best today. And then when you get to the next place, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have different tools that we use with different clients. We have uh, support you with your pricing and how to figure out, you know, if you're pricing correctly, um, how to figure out if there's ways that you can be more profitable with your business. We have tools for supporting you in managing your cash flow. We have tools for uh, assisting you in writing a strategic plan. So we look and see what do you need and we'll you know, offer you a menu of options. Some you'll want right now, some you'll know, okay, down the road, this is what I need. I know that. I'll take advantage of this in six months. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. The bottom line is we, <coughs> nobody goes into business to fail. You know, everybody goes into business because they want to have something fulfilled on in their life. They either want their spouse to stay home or they want to provide for their special needs child or they want a second house, a vacation house, or they want to know their retirement is secure. They want to build an empire. Nobody goes into business to lose. They all go into business to have to win. We want people to win at business. It sucks to lose. We want people to win a business. So even if you're not our ideal client, as Randy said, we're going to look and say, okay, this is what we can do for you. Let's see what we can do to help you on your path to winning at the game of business. That is an excellent place to stop. And I, I think it sucks <laughs> to lose should be on a t-shirt somewhere. And, <laughs> and if you don't want to lose at your business, you know, then, then Thrive Business Services has, has the answer. So I've put in the chat your contact information here. So it's randy at thrivebusinessservices.net or gail, and that's G-A-Y-L-E, at thrivebusinessservices.net. And their phone number is 619-688. 9248 extension zero. And so anything else, ladies, that you would like to share with our audience or with those that might be listening to this afterwards in the replay before we, we call it a day? Well, the first thing is I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. We really, um, Gail's been a member of CWI for a long time and uh, we love the community. We think that it's a great community. Um, love Michelle dearly and um, we appreciate the opportunity to share what we do but really we love what we do and we love what we do for sure we get paid for it right but really we love what we do for the difference that it makes for people mm -hmm. right and uh, Gail's been my best friend for 22 years and never have I ever met another person who has had such a strong commitment to uh, the entrepreneur and I don't know that there really is an entrepreneur school, right? I think they call that one the school of hard knocks. Yeah. So like it doesn't have to be that way. And it could be a really different experience if you're interested and willing and open to have it be a different experience. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for sharing your valuable insights with us and spending so much of your valuable time with us. And we appreciate um, all of you that joined us live, as well as those that listen, you know, like I said, to the replay. Make sure that you pay attention to the Connected Women of Influence Facebook page, our LinkedIn page, our various member groups and so forth. And, you know, just be on the lookout for the next Ask Me Anything that's coming your way. Everyone have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. And we'll see you Thanks, all again soon. Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Bye. Kate.